Section 24, Safe Access. Safe Access. Ladders, floor and wall openings, stairs and railing systems. References for this section are EM385, TAC1, TAC1, Section 24, 29 CFR 1926.500, Subpart M, 29 CFR 1926.1053, Subpart X, 29 CFR 1926.1052, Subpart X, UFGS 013526, and the manufacturer's instructions. Additional references are the American Ladder Institute A1400 series, covering portable wood ladders, portable metal ladders, fixed ladders, job-made ladders, reinforced plastic ladders, rolling ladders, and the requirements for ladder accessories. General, safe access shall be provided to work areas where the danger exists of workers falling through floor, roof, or wall openings, or from platforms, runways, ramps, fixed stairs, or for rope access. A stairway, ladder, ramp, or personnel hoist shall be provided where there is a break of 19 inches or more in a route of access. Electrical work hazard. A means of access constructed of metal should not be used for electrical work or the potential exists to contact electrical conductors. Access ways. A means of access between levels shall be kept clear to allow free passage of workers. If work is performed in an area that restricts free passage, a second means of access shall be provided. Guardrails. For all government-owned or operated facilities, every open-sided floor or platform four feet or more above adjacent floor or ground level shall be guarded by a guardrail system or equivalent along all open sides, except where there is an entrance to a ramp, stairway, or fixed ladders. The guardrail system shall be provided with a tow board when necessary. Activity Hazard Analysis an activity hazard analysis accepted by the government designated authority for the activity in which means of access are to be used shall delineate the following. Design, construction, and maintenance of the means of access and erection dismantling procedures for scaffolds including provisions for providing fall protection. Job made access. Job made means of access shall be designed to support without failure, at least four times the maximum intended load and shall be constructed according to section 22 of this manual. Loading of access ways. Means of access shall not be loaded beyond the maximum intended load for which they were designed or beyond their manufacturer rated capacity. When loaded, planking and decking shall not deflect more than 1 60th the span length. Access limits. The width of access ways shall be determined by the purpose for which they are built, shall be sufficient to provide safe passage for materials and movement of personnel, and, except for ladders, shall be not less than 18 inches. Overhead protection. Access ways shall have overhead protection equal to two inches solid planking whenever work is performed over them or if personnel are exposed to hazards from falling objects. Inspections. Access ways shall be inspected daily. They shall be free of tripping hazards, obstructions, shall not restrict travel, shall be free of ice, snow, grease, and mud, and if slippery, abrasive material is used to assure a safe footing. Safe roof access. Level and guarded platforms shall be provided at the landing area on the roof. Crawling boards shall not be less than 10 inches wide and 1 inch thick, having cleats of 1 by 1 and a half inches. Cleats shall be equally spaced, not to exceed 24 inches apart. 
They shall be mechanically attached to the planks. Crawl boards firmly secured and extend from the ridge pole to the eaves. A lifeline of at least three quarter inch diameter rope or equivalent beside each crawling board for a handhold. Access paths shall be erected. The point of access, material handling areas, and storage areas shall be connected to the work area by a clear access path formed by two warning lines. Ladders. The construction, installation, and use of ladders shall conform to the ANSI ALI A14 series standards as applicable. The load rating shall be clearly and legibly marked on all ladders. Every ladderway, floor opening, or platform shall be guarded by a standard railing with a standard tow board when exposure exists to falling material on all exposed sides except at the entrance to the opening. The passage through the railing shall be provided with either a guard rail or shall be offset so that a person cannot walk directly into the opening. The guard rail shall meet the strength requirements of section 21.F.01. Swing gates are preferred over chain gates. Ladder length. All portable ladders shall be of sufficient length and shall be placed so that workers will not stretch or assume a hazardous position. Portable ladders used as temporary access shall extend at least three feet above the upper landing surface. When a three foot extension is not possible, a grasping device shall be provided to assist workers in mounting and dismounting the ladder. This example shows a ladder extending three feet above the landing platform. In no case shall the length of the ladder be such that the ladder deflection under load would, by itself, cause the ladder to slip from its support. Portable step ladders. The length of portable step ladders shall not exceed 20 feet. Portable ladders. The length of single ladders or individual sections of ladders shall not exceed 30 feet. Two section ladders shall not exceed 48 feet and ladders over two sections shall not exceed 60 feet. When splicing of side rails is required to obtain the required length, the resulting side rail must be at least equal in strength to a one-piece side rail made of the same material. Width of ladders. The minimum clear distance between the sides of individual rung step ladders shall be 16 inches. The minimum clear distance between side rails for all portable ladders shall be 12 inches. Spacing of rungs, cleats, and steps on ladders. On portable ladders, spacing shall be 12 inches on center and uniform, except for job-made ladders where spacing shall be 10 to 14 inches. On step stools, spacing shall not be less than 8 inches or more than 12 inches apart as measured from their center lines. Surfaces. Ladders shall be surfaced so as to prevent injury to a worker from punctures or lacerations and to prevent snagging of clothing. Wooden ladders. Wooden ladders shall not be coated with any opaque covering except for identification or warning labels that may be placed only on one face of a side rail. Slip resistant. Portable ladders shall have slip resistant feet. The rungs and steps of portable metal ladders shall be corrugated, knurled, dimpled, coated with skid resistant materials, or otherwise treated to minimize slipping. Ladder spreader bars. A metal spreader bar or locking device shall be provided on each step ladder to hold the front and back sections in an open position. Ladder setup. Ladders shall not be placed in passageways, doorways, drives, or any location where they may be displaced by any other worker unless protected by barricades or guards. Portable ladders shall be used at such a pitch that the horizontal distance from the top support to the foot of the ladder will not be greater than one quarter the vertical distance between these points. Wooden job made ladders shall be used at an angle such that the horizontal distance is one eighth the length of the ladder. Ladders shall be secured by top, bottom, and intermediate fastenings 
as necessary to hold them rigidly in place and to support the loads that will be imposed upon them. Clearance and Support The steps and rungs of all ladders shall be set to provide at least 7 inches of toe space from the inside edge of the rung to the nearest interference. The top of a non-self-supporting ladder shall be placed with the two rails supported equally unless the ladder is equipped with a single support attachment. Step Across Distance The step across distance from the nearest edge of the ladder to the nearest edge of the equipment or structure shall not be more than 12 inches or less than 2.5 inches. Use of Ladders Ladders shall be restricted to their intended use. Do not do the following. Sit or stand on top. Straddle. Use the top rung. Stand with one foot on the ladder and the other on an adjacent structure. Fold a step ladder and lean it against a wall or walk the ladder. Three points of contact shall be maintained at all times when ascending or descending ladders. Definition of three-point contact. Usually required when ascending or descending ladders means that either both hands and one foot or both feet and one hand are in contact with the climbing device at all times. Reference Appendix Q of this manual. Ladders shall be inspected for visible defects on a daily basis and after any occurrence that could affect their safe use. Broken or damaged ladders shall be immediately tagged, do not use, or similar wording, and withdrawn from service until restored to a condition meeting their original design. Ladders shall not be moved, shifted, or extended while occupied. Ladders shall not be loaded beyond the maximum intended load for which they were designed and tested, or beyond the manufacturer's rated capacity. This includes the worker and all the tools and supplies carried. Use of ladders. Ladders shall not be climbed by more than one person at a time between the same set of rails. Use of ladders, fall protection. Portable ladders used as a means of access to ascend and descend to a work location do not require fall protection. However, only light work for short periods of time shall be performed on portable ladders. No work requiring lifting of heavy materials or substantial exertion shall be done from ladders. Use of ladders. When ladders are the only means of access to or from a working area for 25 or more workers, or when a ladder is to serve simultaneous two-way traffic, double cleated ladders shall be used. The top or top step of a step ladder shall not be used as a step unless it has been designed to be so used by the manufacturer. Ensure latches are in place before climbing an extension ladder. Keep loose tools off steps and top of platform. Modifications to manufactured ladders in order to adapt the ladder to specific or special use shall only be performed using a design approved by a registered professional engineer. These ladders shall meet the applicable ANSI A14 series standard. Use of ladders. Job made ladders will be made in accordance with ANSI ALA standard A14.4. Single rail ladders shall not be used. Three legged ladders may be used for specific tasks if accepted by the government designated authority. The use of ladder climbing devices shall be in accordance with section 21.I. Articulating ladders are allowed if they meet ANSI ALI standard A14.2. Any ladder accessory, including but not limited to ladder levelers, ladder stabilizers, or standoff devices, or ladder straps or hooks, that may be installed or used in conjunction with ladders must be installed and used per the manufacturer's instructions. Handrails. A standard handrail shall be of construction similar to a standard guardrail. See reference section 21.E.01 
except that it is mounted to a wall or partition and does not include a midrail. Handrails shall have smooth surfaces along the top and both sides, provide an adequate handhold for anyone grasping it to avoid falling. The ends of handrails shall be turned into the supporting wall or partition or otherwise arranged so as not to constitute a projection hazard. The height of handrails shall not be more than 38 inches nor less than 34 inches from the upper surface of the handrail to the surface of the tread in line with face of riser or the surface of the ramp. Existing installations need not be modified if they meet the building code that was in effect at the time the facility was built. The handrails and railings shall be provided with clearance of approximately three inches between the handrail or railing and any other object. Floor and roof holes and openings. Floor and roof holes and openings are any that measure over two inches in any direction of a walking working surface which persons may trip or fall into or where objects may fall to the level below. Floor and wall and roof holes and openings. Skylights located in floors or roofs are considered floor or roof holes and openings. Hole opening protection. All floor roof openings or holes into which a person can accidentally walk or fall through shall be guarded by either a railing system with tow boards along all exposed sides or a load bearing cover. Hatchways and chutes. Every hatchway or chute floor opening shall be guarded by a hinged floor opening cover. The opening shall be barricaded with railings so as to leave only one exposed side. The exposed side shall be provided with a swinging gate or offset so that a person cannot walk into the opening. When operating conditions require the feeding of material into the hatchway or opening, protection shall be provided to prevent a person from falling through the opening. Wall openings. Wall openings, 30 inches or more in height and 18 inches or more in width from which a fall could occur shall be protected with a standard guardrail or equivalent. A tow board shall be provided. Extension platforms. An extension platform outside a wall opening onto which materials can be hoisted for handling shall have a standard railing that meets the criteria of section 21.E.01. One side of an extension platform may have removable railings to facilitate handling materials if appropriate fall protection is used. Holes and skylights. Roof openings and holes shall be provided with covers, guardrail systems, or warning line systems on all exposed sides. Non-load-bearing skylights shall be guarded by a load-bearing skylight screen, cover, or railing system along all exposed sides. Workers are prohibited from standing, walking on skylights. Stairways. On all structures 20 feet or more in height, stairways shall be provided during construction. General stairway safety. General stairway safety. Where permanent stairways are not installed concurrently with the construction of each floor, a temporary stairway shall be provided to the work level. Alternatives to the use of stairways shall be addressed in the AHA and shall be acceptable to the government designated authority. Temporary stairway landings. Temporary stairways shall have landings not less than 30 inches in the direction of travel and extend at least 22 inches in width at every 12 feet or less of vertical rise. General stairway safety design. Stairs shall be installed between 30 degrees and 50 degrees from the horizontal. Risers shall be of uniform height and treads of uniform width. Metal stairway pans. Metal pan landings and metal pan treads, when used, shall be secured in place and filled with concrete, wood, or other material at least to the top of each pan. 
Every flight of stairs with four or more risers more than 30 inches in height shall have standard railings or standard handrails unless omitted by design. Stairwells less than 44 inches wide with both sides enclosed, at least one standard handrail shall be installed, preferably on the right descending side. Stairways less than 44 inches wide with having one side open, at least one standard stair railing shall be installed on the open side. Stairwells less than 44 inches wide, having both sides open, one standard stair railing shall be installed on each side. Stairwells greater than 44 inches wide, but less than 88 inches wide, one standard handrail shall be installed on each enclosed side and one standard stair railing installed on each open side. Stairwells greater than 88 inches wide, one standard handrail shall be installed on each enclosed side, one standard stair railing on each exposed side, and a standard handrail in the middle of the stairway. The height of stair rails shall be 42 plus or minus 3 inches from the upper surface of the top rail to the surface of the tread in line with the face of the riser at the forward edge of the tread. Existing installations do not need to be modified. Mid rails, screens, mesh, intermediate vertical members, or equivalent intermediate structural members shall be provided between the top rail and the stairway steps. Doors or gates. Doors or gates opening onto a stairway shall have a platform, and swinging of the door shall not reduce the width of the platform to less than 20 inches. Spiral stairs. Spiral stairways shall not be permitted except for special limited usage and secondary access where it is not practical to provide a conventional stairway. Three points of contact shall be maintained at all times when ascending or descending spiral stairs, ship stairs, or alternating tread stairs. Ramps, runways, and trestles. Ramps, runways, and platforms shall be as flat as conditions will permit. Where the slope exceeds one foot in five feet, traverse cleats shall be applied to the working surface. Vehicle ramps, trestles, and bridges on which foot traffic is permitted shall be provided with a walkway and guardrail outside the roadway. The roadway structures shall be provided with wheel guards, fender logs, or curbs not less than eight inches high, placed parallel and secured to the sides of the runway. When used in lieu of steps, ramps shall be provided with cleats to ensure safe access. Personnel hoists and elevators. Design, construction, installation, or erection, operation, inspection, testing, and maintenance of personnel hoists and elevators shall be in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations and the applicable ANSI standard. Safe practices for rope access work. Climbing equipment consists of ropes, carabiners and snap hooks, pulleys, rope sleeves, rope blocks, brakes, and climbers PPE. All equipment shall be inspected prior to each use and maintained and used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Employees shall be properly trained in the use of all equipment. Ropes used as a working line or safety lines shall not be used to lower limbs or raise equipment. Sharp tools, such as hand saws, shall be sheathed when not in use. Tools used for debarking, cavity work, bark tracing, shall be carried in a bag or belt designed for such use, and not carried in pockets or placed in boots. Climbers belts and saddles are only meant to be used as a suspension scaffold equipment. In addition to the saddle, a fall arrest system is required. Belts shall be equipped with leg straps or seats to take pressure off of the climber's back. Climbing ropes shall not be spliced to effect repair. Ropes shall be coiled and piled or shall be suspended so that the air can circulate through the coils to aid in drying. Wet ropes shall not be used for electrical work. Ropes shall be inspected before and after each use. Harnesses and other personal fall protection equipment used in rope access shall meet the ANSI ASSE Z359 fall protection code.
If descender devices are used, they shall allow a controlled descent taking into consideration the weight of the worker, the length of the descent, considerations for safety, and the need for stopping along the working line for the purpose of hands-free work. General Practices Safety, secondary, belay, or backup lines, or other appropriate fall arrest devices shall be used in addition to the main line or working line, unless the employer can demonstrate that the second line or other fall arrest devices would create a greater hazard or otherwise not be feasible. Safety, secondary, belay, or backup lines should not be used alone for tree climbing. The use of a secondary line or safety line may pose additional risks and increased difficulties. Careful consideration to the impact of secondary line use should be considered before making a decision on the use in tree climbing operations. Where a safety line is used in conjunction with the working line, each line shall have its own separate anchor and shall be separately fixed to the worker's harness. This does not preclude both lines being attached to a single harness attachment point. The safety line shall be connected to the sternal or dorsal D-ring of the body harness. When using safety lines, the maximum free fall distance shall not exceed 6 feet and the maximum arrest force shall not exceed 1,800 pounds. The employer shall ensure that anchors have been evaluated in order to ensure that the overall system safety factors can be met. Risk Assessment before adopting rope access techniques for a particular job, the competent person for rope access shall perform risk assessment and develop a written safety analysis report and submit it to the government designated authority for acceptance. The safety analysis report shall include consideration of the various rope access alternatives available and their respective access advantages and hazards. Risk Assessment In particular, attention shall be given to the following aspects. Ability of the suspended person to safely use materials, equipment, or tools. Whether the work may loosen material which could become a hazard. Whether the time required for the work at any one location will be such that there may be unacceptable levels of risks. Whether it would be possible to quickly rescue workers that are using rope access techniques. The contractor shall make provision for prompt rescue or self-rescue and for emergency services. Rope access worker requirements. The rope access worker shall have a working understanding of the employer's rope access program and all applicable policy and procedures, adjust, inspect, maintain, care for, and properly store rope access equipment, Inspect and verify the integrity of anchor systems and components. Recognize worksite hazards and notify the rope access supervisor of any such hazard. Be capable of identifying work zones and job hazard analysis. The rope access worker shall understand and communicate any written or verbal warnings. Be familiar with rescue procedures and systems used by the employer and assist in the performance of rescue from rope access systems. Utilize appropriate personal protective equipment as designated by the rope access supervisor. The rope access worker shall also follow the competent person for rope access directions or, where appropriate, pursuant to the requirements of the safe practices document, the rope access lead technician's directions regarding the work being performed. Notify the competent person for rope access if assigned.